Wired. Unplugged. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Wired Unplugged episode 49. Feeling fine. 49, feeling fine. Have we never, not already done a bingo call episode like that? I was going to say, we're just at that age now where yeah. just bingo calls we're, we're, we're 49 just whispers, now. We're nearly whispers at big on the 50th. Wind. Yeah. Uh, next yeah. episode is, is the, uh, I don't know what half of a 100 is. Uh, isn't a bicentennial every 200 years? What would this be? Don't know. Anyway, what? Well, it's, it's weird, right? Because, you know, when people put in your calendar, it's like, oh, yeah, this, uh, this is going to be um, a bi weekly call. And it's like, yeah. okay. Do you mean twice a week or do you mean every two weeks? Fortnightly. Every two weeks. Yeah, fortnightly. Yeah. yeah. But it turns out bi weekly can mean both. So it's like oh, maybe okay. this is it then. Maybe it's a bicentennial yeah. episode. If you know, let us know. Bicentennial, man. What a film. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Right. Okay. So uh, listen, please let us know what, what it is the big 50th special bash. Uh, you can, if you want to do that, you can email in unplugged at wiredproductions.com or you can tweet us at wiredp or wired unplugged. Uh, which is our official sort of Twitter account. Um, anyway, good to see you, Warren. Uh, 49 it's episodes you. in. And yeah. uh, we kind of left things on a bit of a, not a cliffhanger, really, but the industry left us on a bit of a cliffhanger because just before we uh, left, we were mere hours away from the Xbox Developer Direct. We said we were going to talk about that when we came back. Yeah. We said that we'd have updates on everything like that. So happy to say... We're going to be doing that in a little bit. For anyone listening, we're going to we're going to uh, breach that big old subject of Xbox Developer Direct as well as some other stuff. But if you've been here before, you'll know that we start things off relevant, tight knit in the Wired headquarters, which had had a, a nice, exciting update last week actually regarding a, yeah. a certain furry friend. And uh, tell you what, why don't we get into the segment and you can tell me all about that? Let me play another jingle for you guys. <laughs> Wired propaganda. Two jingles in the space of two minutes there. It was a bit of a short intro because, you know, it's like 49. We're just rounding up. Just come on. 50. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, last last week we, we spent the opening talking about the Oscars, right? Um, and yes. RRR. Um, yeah. And it, it's, it's really interesting because this, this gets clipped. This gets clipped and thrown on. Yeah. And one of the clips uh, that was taken was us talking about RRR at the Oscars and the whole James Cameron thing and yada yada. And that tweet, the interaction on it versus everything else is ridiculous. It's insane. It's insane. RRR just has a very loyal fan base and they're like, yes, people are talking about this amazing movie. And yeah. it's like, yes. Yeah. It's yes. great that it feels like everyone's personal movie. It feels like their yeah. movie, despite it being huge. You know, yeah, I like it when that happens. So, hey, yeah, cool. Well, that's it. T- Tangent City, baby. I'm sure we're going to do a thought, few this I thought week. about in Bruges. In Bruges, I was like, that's my film. That's my film. No one else knows about this. Yeah. It's like, oh, no, everyone knows about it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> is, is there like a spiritual success to that recently? Like a bunch of, bunch bunch of, of Isherin of I don't know. In yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But l- listen, everybody, we're going to go down some tangents. We're going to have some fun like we do every week. You know, I don't, we don't know when it's going to happen. We just slip down the deep, deep rabbit hole uh, and... We come out, you know, clippable, basically, don't we? Um, <laughs> over on Twitter. Uh, maybe this is a great segue into our first bit of white propaganda this week. The world of Twitter, uh, our home, not a spiritual home, but that's where our social clips are. That's why people ask us questions or answer them. What's going on on Twitter this week? Bow, wow, wow. Yippee, yo, yippee, Where your dog at? I'll tell you where the dog's at. Very good. Very <laughs> on good. Twitter. On Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so not cool. That's uh, a yeah, very good. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we mentioned last week that there's a new office wired dog yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, wired office dog, I should say. Yeah. Um, but it does run the place now. Uh, and she's called Leah. And uh, yeah. the, the wonderful social team at Wired have given Leah uh, the, the ultimate honor of having her own twitter again this is a thing um, isn't it like people have like instagrams for cats and whatnot yeah yeah, yeah. my my cats have instagram <laughs> yeah, this is what i mean it's a thing it's, it's a yeah. real it's a real thing yeah, yeah they're really good at it as well i'm like teach me teach me your ways <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they just think different you know yeah uh, yeah, uh, yeah 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 well that's, that's been exciting there's a lot of pet lovers out there who i'm sure heard yeah. the news and would like to are appropriately uh now you can do that yeah, you can get all your pup dates uh, from dog level of what goes on in a, a video game publisher. Um, so, you know, it's very interesting. Like, usually, you know, there could be something really cool that we haven't announced on a screen. 
And we'd be excited, but the dog is just like, ooh, someone's ankle. I'll go over that. So, yeah. you know. Um, Again, different level. You know, Different level. Different level. Different not too happy. Yeah. Not too happy about um, the, the gory, cuddly carnage playtesting that's going on at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, my enemy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hound the yeah. for a sequel. I'm waiting for the DLC. Yeah. 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 Very good. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I had a heck of a tangent. I'm going to have to just tell you what I was going to talk about in more detail. Very bring quickly. it. Bring it. You mentioned Derek Akora a couple of weeks ago. So Derek I, Akora? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I Derek watched, and Sam. I started watching Most Haunted again on, yeah. uh, in, my, in my free time at night for watching Most Haunted. And the very first episode, it's like talking about how dogs see ghosts different and about how dogs are just not bothered about anything and they're just looking at like it put things in the room. And it reminded me of what you said about Leah not being bothered about something cool. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but yeah. no, seriously, I, I did go ghost hunting with Derek Akora, which was amazing. Yes, peace. Yeah. And, um, yeah. you know, during the ghost hunt, uh, lots of cool, interesting things are described and whatnot. And then, you know, step outside and he'd have a, he'd have a little cigarette. Um, it's quite cold. And I remember just going outside because he was alone. I was like, I'll just go talk to Derek Akora for a bit. Um, and I did. Um, and then I started asking him questions about, you know, well, the, the spirits of dinosaurs, what happens to them? Uh, and then he was telling me uh, they're, they're in their own separate realm and all that jazz. But, uh, but yeah. Dinosaur so, so ghost it, realm. Is that, a, it, it, is that an extended part? You played Star Fox Adventures recently. Yeah. <laughs> Do you get to the dinosaur spirit realm at any point? No, it's just every question inspired by dinosaur planet. It's like, so dinosaur... <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Dinosaur X, Y, and Z. Yeah, tell me about it. Oh, yeah. man. Do you, do you know what's so weird about that though you mentioned dinosaur planet and i did play that and complete it recently yeah it was uh my over christmas i just randomly broke out the gamecube um and what was offensive what was really offensive about my time with it is um i looked i looked at the bottom of the screen and it said uh rare nintendo 2002 and i was like mm. this game is 20 years old yeah the and gamecube that game came out 20 years ago on the gamecube which yeah. i don't consider retro <laughs> no i yeah i mean I thought, yeah, I still remember it's the like a, yeah, yeah. and there's the, the the n64 before that and then the That's snes was, and, yeah, the, and i'm, yeah. I'm like, like oh no mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've 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 just aged like that yeah bags just appeared under my eyes i've got wrinkles what was that? I was, I was dinosaur watching... ghosts are haunting me in my house. I think I was watching something recently, and uh, I was watching it's a YouTube Park. video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I was watching something recently, and, and they they said, oh, oh, this uh, this hasn't been out since the now retro Xbox 360, and I was like, excuse me, yeah. What was I watching? I think it might have been about Dead Space remake or something, and it was like the original was on the retro Xbox 360, and I was like, what did you just say? Anyway crazy so there we go them, them rudimentary 3d graphics with really cool light and <laughs> <laughs> mental isn't it so oh. there we go that's that's a, that's a nice you know uh dog friendly update there why yeah I, 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 just unreal. on that I, yeah that, that is the update on that but it also just brings me to a point that i do feel sorry for steve as well like steve at wide legend um you know it's because he will take any opportunity to talk about the zx spectrum and i'm like oh that's it's quite old <laughs> <laughs> but he's like no it's really good it's really good i'm like yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, back in its day it, yeah. at, at the time, you had to be there you had at, to be it, there at the time it was actually quite groundbreaking yeah, um, yeah. that's what we're gonna be like about the gamecube you know what i mean so like adventure battle 2 yeah yeah all right we had to be there did you um yeah wow unfortunately well, to get it yeah sorry steve all right so <laughs> what else have we got going on at the, what the wired headquarters by the way also steve was the, was the sort of the, the sort of trailblazer here that got rrr onto everybody's yes. RRR radar so i'd like to you know RRR radar. For that. So, yeah, there we, yeah radar yeah. rrr come on <laughs> uh, all right what have we got next um so um if you are listening to this when it comes out or after um you'll be happy to know that the Martha is Dead Collector's Editions, uh, which are absolutely gorgeous and beautifully made, have now mm. been pushed out into the world. They should be arriving. Um, so, you know, you can look forward to owning uh, a piece of beautiful gaming history. Yeah. But, uh, honestly, there's, um, you know, we, we spoke about Black Label before. And, um, you know, one thing, one thing that Wired 
always do a lot and 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 this is why some things take so long is the quality the quality mm -hmm. so it's um you know uh these collector's editions are a, a love letter to the developers and to the games themselves as well so to have mm -hmm. something that is um how do you say beautiful and fitting for what the game is you know a lot of time effort goes into it and there's always there's always logistical challenges across the way you know ever since we live in a post-brexit world <laughs> yeah 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 no, logistics right yeah. can become a bit tricky yeah. um but you know they what they i'd always get it done they get it done well so That's yeah it. so that look forward to, if, if you did order one it should be dropping through your door uh, well it won't drop through your door because of its uh size but uh <laughs> but it's traveling yeah, it'd be lovely and good right placed now. yeah yeah yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's, yeah. that's really good. It's uh, interesting to have collector's editions and stuff like that. It's been on my mind a lot this week because uh, of two things. Uh, and it's been mostly to do with um, the Pokemon trading card game announcing that like the online version's shutting down. Uh, and, what? Uh, yeah, TCG or whatever is is no longer being supported. Uh, it's 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 going to kind of exist, but they're not. You know, the new packs, the new physical packs, aren't getting a digital version of them. And it's because they're pushing um, TCG Live instead. Um, so that game's kind of... And, and I'm a Magic the Gathering online player. And the new Magic yeah. pack is out, like, next week. And people are about how the, the joy of tangible stuff, collector's edition things, you know. I, um, mm. I just think it's a, a really, really nice thing to just find little things that you had from years ago. Go, oh, look at this. You start going through the manual. Games don't yeah. even have manuals anymore. So... Yeah. A little, imagine it, like your Marvel's Dead Collector's Edition. Five years time, you go, oh, I remember this. And you open it, and you're going to stop looking for all the little, the, the trinkety bits, the cute yeah. the cute things, lithographs and whatnot. And you're going to be like, oh, this is, this was good, this. Yeah, yeah I, might, I might I might break it out again on my retro PS5. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, this is exactly it, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, Marvel's Dead, on the way through the ether, the network systems, Brexit, whatever. It's happening. What have we got, what it's have happening. got going on this week? Uh, so next up, we've got a, a set of news around uh, the upcoming Tiny Troopers uh, Go. Mm -hmm. So this weekend, if you listen to this on the Friday when this goes out, yeah. uh, this weekend we are doing uh, a cross-play uh, test uh, on Steam and for uh, Xbox Insider Program as well. So this is just to help us... Um, Get a bit of data and just see how yeah. the cross-play functionality holds up, how Not effective refined, it is, and so on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it helps us tweak and change things just before we mm -hmm. get to putting it out into the world. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you do want to check out uh, this game ahead of launch, which is always exciting, uh, try some cross-play co-op. Give yeah. it a go. Give it a go. Sign up. Get involved. Um, but there's more. There's more, Jake. Mm -hmm. There's more time troopers going. Goodness. Okay. I can't say that fast. Time Please troopers fast. go goodness. Time troopers go goodness. Oh. No, no, no. I, I turn into a stutter. Go, 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 goodness, yeah. goodness me. Uh, no, but uh, on Utomic, Utomic, the really cool uh, digital game platform as well. Uh, we're going to be running the beta on the seventeenth uh, to the nineteenth of February, and that's going to be for all Utomic subscribers. So if you play games on Utomic, yeah. you'll get instant access uh, to to get involved and, and check this out. Um, the, if you haven't heard of Utomic, um, they've been really good to us over time. We've done several uh, game releases with them, um, and again, it's 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 a nice online subscription service. You can sign up, get access to games right there and then. Um, you know, if was, you're not uh, gone, I was going to say, I, I I I remember Utomic, right? Um, yeah. And uh, I'm for those that aren't maybe vastly aware of my situation i live in rural north wales where the internet isn't the fastest like it's, it's better than it's been like but i've never been able to subscribe to like the stadia or the x cloud or the on live or the atomics of the world but i'd always try the free trials just to see is this the one that can somehow do it yeah but i remember atomic from back in the day and stadia's sort of came and went and it it, it did its its course and on live does no longer exist and and Microsoft oh, just remember that, remember that? Oh, that yeah. was, that, that's the new on yeah. life was like the first one to do it, I think. And then so what I'm wondering is I've got no real proof of sources, but it's something worth thinking about. Is Atomic one of the longest running streaming platforms sort of thing? 
Do you know did, what? Did, I think it's like the Netflix for games thing that everyone's tried to crack. You Thomas has been doing it for a long time now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I've, it, here we, their Twitter was, was May 2014. Nearly wow. 10 years strong. Wow. There we go. So yeah, yeah. And, and like, like you mentioned, Utomic are, go, are good to like indie publishers and they're not just looking for the, you know, the Assassin's Creeds of the world, are they? No. So th- that's a really nice thing. Isn't that's it? really good. And their community is really active and fun as well. Yeah. Um, something that you, and, we noticed from Stadia, right? Stadia yeah. were like mad in mean, the Wired and Stadia respect was proper there, wasn't it? So it was like a big yeah. salute when, when that sort of got put out to pasture. So Utomic yeah. the same thing, isn't it? And, and that's the thing. I think it's good that um, without this becoming the Utomic podcast, yeah. but I think it's good that, you know, if if you are a particular type of gamer, if you don't have, you know, if you can't keep up to date with consoles, latest releases and stuff, going that route via a Utomic or similar, it, it could be a good way to keep you engaged with games without having to worry about, hey, I need to buy this thing, I need to buy that thing, mm-hmm. I need to just pay yeah. between, you know, 50 and 60 quid to get a brand new game. It's just, you know, it's a nice easy way to keep your gaming um gaming uh current you're never titillations be going yeah you're never going to be retro if you've got utomic you know yeah. also one last utomic tidbit for you you know grip is on their twitter banner so shout out to utomic yeah sick shout out to the grip club what a, what yeah. a fucking game that is all right cool 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 so yeah uh, utomic beer. yeah you just mentioned grip and i'm like oh that was fun I love that. On the retro that's PS1, fun. I used to play Roll Cage. And, and yeah. Uh, wow. Well, yeah. So. yeah that's, uh, again, right, going t- too far down a rabbit hole, the developers of that are absolutely um, wonderful as well. There's, there's Chris uh, in Canada who's who just really loved Roll Cage. <laughs> he loved Roll Cage. He approached the developers at different shows and stuff and said, you should make a new Roll Cage. And they're like, no, nah, we, we're doing life now um <laughs> it's been a while yeah, yeah. uh and then he started doing it on his own then he, he got to a point where he started recruiting uh some of the members of the roll cage team and that developed in into grip and you know he had to teach uh, i remember we we were at pax with grip and uh we we had an airbnb which had this cool little it was like a it, it was cool but anyway i remember uh we had some downtime and he's just there He's there working away on the kitchen table on his laptop and it's like oh yeah uh i've just learned how to do this so i'm just pushing this through the rest of the game and i'm like cool yeah. um I'm having some but, breakfast mate you know yeah but he, he's just a very good example of um you know he he, he was he 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 was sorry he's, yeah. he's still alive um <laughs> it's not chris <laughs> but he um he, he is amazing, passionate. He was very driven, and he he learned for what he wanted to achieve. And I think he's wonderful. Really good dev story in there as well. Grip yeah. is great. Go play it. Yeah, nice one. So shouts like you can play yeah. it on Utomic. Can play it on Nintendo Switch as well, and the Switch version is amazing. Oh, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Nintendo yeah. got Grip on their banner on Twitter. Wow, well, Nintendo. Oh, wow. Well, um, left out words. One more bit of propaganda news, <laughs> which is yeah. also related to the Time Troopers Global Ops. Uh huh. Yeah. The go thing yeah. threw me off then, because I was like, because I was, what was it that we said earlier? Uh, yeah, sorry, it's not like Pokemon Go. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> it's, it's not an AR go. experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, so um, we, um, you know, in 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 the coming period of time, without being too uh, pointed on on specifics, we're going to start to learn about the release date of Tiny Troopers and when that's going to be coming out into the world. Things are obviously gearing up, so expect some announcements soon. Um, but within that as well, um, we're now kicking off um, the uh, the bulk the bulk of the PR campaign, I would say. So you know, in terms of previews, reviews, impressions, interviews, yada yada yada. The um, but that really also, starting to run. Yeah, yeah, it's starting. You know, things the cranks starting to yeah, turn. Yeah, things are starting it. to churn. Yeah. Um, so you know, within that as well, we're also going to be looking for streamers that want to play. So this is a really good game to play um on stream if you're gearing up for your big big core stream right you can play with multiple people at the same time in co-op cross play as well so format isn't an issue um so if you are interested in checking out uh tiny troopers then do get in touch get in touch with wide at wide p yeah. um and uh we'll be able to get you on board get you on board get you set up get you geared up um yeah i'm ready to go 
I'm really wondering already, why... already to go. Won it back. I was like, I, I really wonder then. I know it's global ops, and I was like, why was I, why was I stuck running a salmon about it? It's because of that global, global offensive. offensive. That's what it is, and I'm always like, yeah. yeah. And I always have that thing of when I can't remember which one's right. Oh my god, yeah. global ops, CS, gosh. So CS go. Uh, Propaganda's uh, pretty tiny troopers uh, forward this week, then, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, oh no, actually, I'm going to throw something in and another little bonus thing. So um, we recently mentioned that um, Steph came on board at yeah. Wired as as a community manager, which is amazing. Steph is amazing, doing great stuff. Um, but one thing that has also started to gear up again, and we mentioned this uh, a couple of weeks ago, is um, regular live streaming. So regular live streaming uh, each week uh, that shows off some of the cool upcoming games. Uh, recently, uh, Steph played and showed off some Tin Hearts. This week, this week, if you if you go to Twitch, you'll see uh, a stream for Tiny Troopers Global Ops. Uh, so you can see the game in action. Uh, she's playing alongside Steve and also uh, the other Jake, the other Jake, friend of Wired, um, and also uh, uh, part of Saving Our World as well. Uh, so they they have a, a bit of fun uh, checking out the game in action. So oh, if nice. you do want to have a little yeah. a little cheeky look, yeah, cash rise across to twitch.tv forward slash Wired. Very, 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 very good. Yeah. And shout out to Steph. All right. Yeah, big shout out to Steph. Propaganda, Steph. nice and neat and tidy this week. Uh, we don't have a jingle for questions, but the good news is we didn't really get any asked any burning questions, did we? Like you say, a lot of people were very excited about RRR. Yeah, we got so, asked so, a lot of questions like, about RRR, but yeah. it's like uh, we, the directors <laughs> should probably answer yeah. that. Or, yeah, maybe we can we'll get, them, get on, them on. But in, in, yeah. in, in, in the meantime, yeah, uh, yeah. No question, but a, a lot of yeah uh, answers and engagement. So we'll take that as well. Um, so what I will say is, um, before we go into the... Actually, you know what? It's probably going to come up a little bit later on in there. But I, I'll tell you this. I've been playing a lot of this Dead Space remake. Um, so mm. I'll, I'm just going to take this question time to say, Aaron, what did you play this week? What game have you played this week? Have you, you Please tell me you've played something. Have I? <laughs> <laughs> I um... This is me holding you accountable, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Remember your yeah. resolution, man. <laughs> yes yes i um i played five minutes of golden eye right it was yeah, a quick good. five minutes of golden eye on, on on a morning uh i played some mario kart 8 deluxe on oh, switch great. uh with some american friends yeah brilliant and uh the main thing that i've been playing that i just want to get finished just because i'm like i, I know i'm near the end now is yeah, uh callisto sure. protocol good. um so you know it's funny you mentioned dead space but yeah that's where i am at the moment um i i have i have thoughts on it um but those thoughts will spill over for like about i think we'll be here for three hours of me dissecting yeah chopping the limbs off my yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. I, honestly I, I, before before we record this right i go for a little walk and it, even all week before this i've been thinking about Callisto protocol my thoughts and feelings towards it and I think I could do a TED Talk analysis on breaking it. Uh, I, it's, it's, it's a weird balance of an equation here on in terms of, and we'll talk about this in a bit as well, is you know what constitutes success to a business, what constitutes success or failure to a player, and what constitutes success and failure to the developers as well. I have been analyzing all points in my head specifically for me. Uh, and I don't think we should go there because I, I will be here for like, I've got slides. I'll bring out the slides. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Project it onto the Sega Where building and get a megaphone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Well, I'm, I'm still glad I asked, but Mario Kart as well. What have you been playing? Um, I've been playing Magic the Gathering. The ranked season comes to an end. Um, I've been, I had. That's with cards, yeah? Magic the Gathering, yeah, that's the card, card thing. That's the card yeah. thing, yes, that's the one. It's like Pokemon, but uh, even no, somehow, I, I, somehow even in, nerdier. In my drawer, I have, um, I have, in one of these drawers somewhere, I've got, uh, I've got my own Magic the Gathering deck as well. Oh, there we go. So I'm, I'm yeah. doing that. Uh, the, the, the season came to an end, um, so I'm starting the season afresh. This new one, uh, there's like a new set of cards coming up next week or whatever uh and i'm gonna try and just get to like mythic rank which is like the top 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 i mean i'm aiming for top 100 in the uk that's my goal uh in three weeks can i do it probably if i try as hard as i can 
I'm aiming high. I'm not going to say no, because then, you know, I'm about Tune to in to episode 53 to find out the answer. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll find out, won't we? Um, but yeah, so I've been doing a bit of that. And then uh, in Battlefield 2042, the big shooty game, they added in classes, which was Battlefield's whole shtick. Yeah. Battlefield was a game where they, they said, okay, go out there and just be useful for your team. Mm. That, was, that was it, wasn't it? That's Battlefield. But then the last Battlefield was like, actually, you've got like a jetpack now or a grappling hawk or da, 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 da. But they've just kind of brought back all the classes again. So now it's a bit more of like, you want to be a medic? Be a medic. You want to be a support yes. guy? So I had one spin of that and I'm going to play some tonight. So what is, uh, what, what is your favorite Battlefield game for experience? I've got, I've got, I've, I've got two. I, I actually, and now the, 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 the clever answer is Battlefield Bad Company 2, but it's not my answer, but that's the, that's the right answer that's in my opinion. Answer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's the good one. But, uh, yeah. I really like Battlefield one and battlefield five the recent ones i did like them actually yeah um i played battlefield three a lot battlefield bad company two is great but i i, I did like battlefield uh one i think that was just really good um the was that, sorry the, the original battlefield or the battlefield no, that was called, sorry, battlefield, it's called one. battlefield one yeah from like yeah, 2015 yeah, yeah. or yeah. something so uh, yeah. yeah looking forward to a bit of that but uh that, that's it really so that's the the questions and answers section of the week if you want to let us know what you've been playing you can tweet us at yp or, or wide unplugged um but really uh, the, the thing that we were kind of talking about the most last week was this inevitable xbox developer direct and i, I guess i'm going to play a jingle and then I'm suppo- I imagine somewhere it might come up in the news. Well, let's find out. News breaks down from Google. Welcome back to the Wired Unplugged Podcast. Hi. <laughs> I said it <laughs> like it was an ad break, didn't British I? British Bake Off. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Aaron, you do a really great job every week of scouring the, 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 the chaff and the noise of the internet and finding the juiciest morsels for us to discuss in this podcast. And normally you bring such a bountiful abundance of news, we don't even cover it all. So let's see how we get on this week. It's going to be the same this week, I think. <laughs> I think. Yeah, there's too much going on. Let's have a go. There's too much going on. And this was still with cherry picking. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I, I think the first thing that we should cover off is what we discussed last week is, yeah. and, you know, for everyone listening or watching, Sorry, we know that this is technically a week late, but it's worth talking about, right? Uh, from multiple point of view. So Xbox held their first Xbox Developer Direct. Um, we had some thoughts and feelings uh, slash mm-hmm. predictions hopes in terms of the, yeah, the, well, the yeah. format. And you, you asked the question of, do you think it will just be the four games? And, <laughs> and I was, you know, we got... I, yeah, I was like, yeah. yeah. And you were like, don't know about that. Yeah. Well, who was and, right? Well, it was you <laughs> uh, because yeah so uh, <clears throat> i guess it's a great time to mention that xbox uh did indeed shadow drop a game there so yeah. not only did they secretly announce it they didn't kind of go the sort of more predictable and one more thing here's skyrim 2 coming out yeah. in 50 years halfway through the events they were like oh Hiya, we're the people that made Evil Within. Remember that really scary game? Well, look, here's this like really bright colored game about like being funky and that. And there's a cat in it called 808. Anyway, it's out now. See you later. That happened. Yeah. <laughs> um, and-, and, and that's that's exciting to me. That's exciting to me because, you know, there were whispers of that game yeah. moments before the developer direct happened. Yeah, really close. It hadn't. To- it hadn't actually leaked. A whole game was made without any whispers, without any leaks or anything like that in terms of major confirmed leaks. Yeah. Um, and that gets me excited about what the future of this format could hold, especially if they are, because this was, hey, it's out now on Game Pass. Go have fun. Yeah. And I, it makes me wonder if, you know, if they have other projects in the work that may be, um, you know, shadow drop game pass games from yeah. some of their studios yeah. that may be a bit more um testing the waters type of thing because you know you wouldn't expect this game from um from tango you know the, no, that, the, the, yeah 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 it's it's you yeah, know what, it the, evil within ghostwire yeah. tokyo it didn't leak it, because if someone told you this you'd say no mate yeah, you'd be like, <laughs> no, no, all right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I bet they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Shinji Mikami doing this bright, colorful comic book game. Right, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Um, 
yeah, I, that that excites me in terms of what this format could offer in the, the future. And and we said this is kind of an interesting first push out of the garage, really, for this because it kind of sets an expectation amongst a fan base of what these directs will be moving forward. So, are people gonna expect that type of shadow drop game pass game going forward? Are they gonna expect that there will be something more than? the four games or whatever number of games they say um it's going to be an interesting thing to follow and i have to i have to admit that's quite um it's quite for what was shown in there it's quite a hard balance to get the interest right because you know you look at um forza mm -hmm. right um it's you know synonymous with xbox of course um and 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 it looks wonderful but it's, it's a very hardcore racing yeah simulator right um yeah, so this is the and, forza motorsport you know the kind of key franchise not the forza horizon which is a little bit more uh, accessible and stuff like that yeah. so this is the you know like the core forza right yeah like gran yeah. turismo esque right yeah it, it's a hard i think it's a hard balance to get right but i think they did a very wonderful job of how everything was paced what was shown i'll be honest the biggest surprise for me was redfall um, nine times it was shown, they said it was going to be shown, but when that game was revealed, I, I hated, I, I, sorry, I didn't hate. I was like, that is not for me. The trailer was like, this has been made for cool bro kids. And I'm like, no, I can't, this, this doesn't yeah, seem for me. It, However, tonally it, it, the first reveal was a little bit like. I don't know if the right word's edgy, but it was certainly yeah. like a bit quirky, like yeah, but like manufactured quirk. Do you know what I mean? Where it's like, oh yeah, okay, someone with a streak of color in their hair and someone yeah. witchy and yeah, yeah. Um, they but, all wish they but, were claptrap from Borderlands, like yeah. yeah. But the 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 one thing I will say is that was the biggest surprise for me because what they did in their slot on the developer direct completely turned me around on what I thought and felt <clears> about the game. Yeah. You know. Um, I think it looks really interesting now. I think it's really cool. I don't necessarily know if I'm gonna go out and and and, and buy it, um, but I'm like, this is this is this is really cool, you know, and a nice open world to explore alone or with or with friends. Um, you know, I I really loved playing Left 4 Dead back in the day, and this is kind of like Left 4 Dead with vampires, but with cool quests of open world to explore, go your own way. I think it's wonderful. I think it's really cool. Yeah, that and was... I, that was what I found very interesting about the developer direct of how that information did just go. Yeah, cool. Yeah, and that was sort of the kind of finale, if you like, wasn't it, of the showcase? Mm. Redfall doing that. Redfall was in the news. I just wanted to bring it up for posterity in case anyone wants to say anything about it. Uh, Redfall's also in the news again today because of the recent announcement that the game will require an internet connection full time to play even if you're playing single player now. Uh, so not sure if that is just for now or whatever, but that's something yeah. that uh, the internet is like currently discussing as we speak. It was announced like an hour before we started recording and... I did not see that. Yeah. I did not see yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. It's super fresh though, right? You, yeah. you know, um, we, we both did it right after we finished work. So I just happened to check Twitter and I was like, oh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, this is a sort of... Uh, I don't know, like a story first Left 4 Dead kind of um, vibe. Then it's coming out on May the 2nd. So that was one thing I quite liked about this is that we were getting a lot of this information with release date and it was all soon. The one thing we didn't get there was that thought so most but they, they didn't give you a date for that actually. Everything well, else we'd have to ask. Actually, what they cleverly did with that was take a date away because I think yeah. originally it was set for it had either a quarter attached to it or a season. Yeah. And now what they've just reverted to is 2023. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah. so you know, whilst, whilst they didn't get a date, they kind of alluded to won't meet what yeah. their <laughs> expectation was, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, but I, I will say it looks great. Um, I, I do think it looks wonderful. Mm -hmm. The amount of attention to detail is fantastic as always. And, that was my least favorite part of the of the show though um just because it's it felt like words that you've always heard before and you know when they say oh and and don't get me wrong this is an amazing 
level of detail they go to where they're like, oh, and, you know, dirt accumulates over time as you go across different terrain. And, you know, the it helps tell the story of the car by the end of your race and stuff. And you're like, oh, wow, that, that, that's really cool marketing PR spiel. But then when you think about it and you see the game in action, it's like, it's a racing game. I'm following a racing line. I'm trying to be very accurate. I'm not paying attention to the little specks of dust. <laughs> and it, it's great that those things are there. And I, I, sorry, I do want to say that incredible amount of level of attention to detail and the work that goes into that is, is, is amazing. But it's, it's the same thing that you hear over and over with racing games, you yeah, know, at E3 and so on. Immersion. Realism, yeah. fidelity, uh, yeah, technologically you, advanced, uh, yeah. authentic. That's yeah. you know, and, and, and you think of you, th you think of NBA right at the start of a new console yeah. cycle. The once the one <laughs> one picture that you'll always see is a close up of uh, a player on the court with the sweat, with the it's realistic looking sweat. sweat. And it's like yeah, better sweat, better yeah. sweat. This is the this is the most immersive, realistic uh you know game that the studio has made today and it's going to have the look sound and feel of a real basketball game you know and it's, yeah. but i mean i guess that's what people want but but yeah you're right and that i guess you know this kind of taps into what i quite enjoyed about the developer direct um which hopefully doesn't sound too brutal because it's actually quite a nice thing i promise is that because it was i knew that it was four games or whatever turned out there was five but you know they said that it was gonna be four games yeah. when it was four at the time uh i have my telly on and i've got like a window into my kitchen so i just thought i'm gonna go make a drink i went and made a drink da, da, da. i could still hear it going on but i was like it's only four at the time so yeah. I, I, I had to make a drink it wasn't like some flurry of announcements but you know i i, I think that's kind of the vibe with this entire thing there's probably people that really liked thoughts but they didn't like the Elder Scrolls Necron, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. but it means that most people leave this thinking, oh, most of that I quite enjoyed. And that's, that's a cool thing, right? You know? Uh, um, and, and, and that is what I, I think this is, you've, you've hit the nail on the head there in terms of how it was paced and divided each section. Not only was it, not only was every section welcoming to people who may not be yeah. familiar or excited for the game, but the fact that it did talk to those people, those fans, like the Elder Scrolls Online yeah. section, you know, I, I, I have, I, I have no personal. I think Elder Scrolls Online looks cool, and you know, I like, I like Oblivion and Skyrim and things like that. But, um, yeah. you know, I, it, it's just one of those games where I'm like, ah, time, time. Um, Starting a new MMO is so much yeah. daunting but, but, than ever for but, a busy but, person. But, but hearing, hearing the passion and the intricacies of the lore and stuff, I'm like. It's great. It's great. I'm like, I, you, you, yeah. it's made to be appreciated by the people that will appreciate it, but also a nice introduction to yeah. newcomers. I, I right, thought it was I, very nicely done. Yeah, it is. And it's great what you say, because I'm, I, I, I'm sure there's lots of people listening in uh, or watching uh, are the same. If you don't watch this podcast, it's available on YouTube, by the way. Um, but, but uh, you know, yeah, even if it's not for me, like you say, you're watching it and you're going, wow. And like, it's good that you reminded of the passion in video games. So you're watching it yeah. and you're feeling a good way about it. You know? So that was, uh, so yeah. So to kind of catch everyone up then that Elder Scrolls Necrom is an expansion, uh, for the Elder Scrolls online, big sort of Elder Scrolls, uh, MMO made by Zenimax. Necrom is in Morrowind, but not the Morrowind DLC that we've already had. This is in the never seen before, just spoken about yeah. aspect of Necrom to the East, you know, Rumors are maybe the new Elder Scrolls is going to be set there or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and that's coming out in June. Uh, actually, this is the kind of outlier in a way that right after the developer direct, they did another direct uh, where they just focused on this because they know that you know this is a game, this is a service game anyway. Yeah, Elder Scrolls you pay to get in at this at this level and stuff. So we saw that we saw High Fire Rush, which was the Shadow Drop game. Um, again, like another Bethesda thing that Tango Software. Bethesda game seems to have been doing really well on 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 the internet by all the cords. We mm -hmm. saw the first; it opened with uh, Minecraft Legends, which is that um, like hyper casual strategy thing. <laughs> I I really oddly, I really oddly appreciated the Minecraft section for a very weird reason. There was one guy. Yep. There was one guy with in that who's with an accent <laughs> with an accent who just spoke like a person i know and I was like exactly what you mean I, I when that yeah i know exactly what you mean he started talking and it was like 
Yeah, and I was like, it wasn't like, you know, Mark Zuckerberg's metaverse. Yeah. Where it's like, that's great, Mark. We're going to get into And he's like, I love Arizona. <laughs> I, sorry, I don't do accents very much. And it's like, Mark Zuckerberg's like pretending he likes video games. And he's going, I yeah. loved Arizona Sunshine. And then, yeah, anyway, whatever. This yeah. was like a guy who was like, yep, with Minecraft, basically what we've done, yeah, is... Yeah, it's my like, uncle. It's I, my uncle. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah okay. That every man was like the highlight for me, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, we, we, we think it... We, I think it's pretty cool. So I played like, like uh, yeah. I played uh, Level Five's sequel to the Studio Ghibli and Level Five JRPG Nino Cooney, which was called Nino Tooney. Nino Tooney. Nino Tooney. It was actually called something really rubbish, wasn't it? Like Nino Cooney Two: The Revenant Kingdom or some I don't know. Revenant right? Kingdom. That is. That think, is, that is it, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So shouts. So shouts out. It was a great game, and it, and it, it, had, it had its mechanics, but it had occasionally these little tactical kind of pick mini moments where you would do little siege battles and yeah. Minecraft Legends is like a full game of that. So I was watching it and I was like, oh, it's a bit pick mini. It's a bit, you know. Um, yeah. I can't honestly say that, like, I'd put money down for it, but knowing it's coming out Game Pass in April, I played that other Minecraft game, uh, whatever it was called, the, the not Defenders, why? You know the, what I'm on about? Yeah. Minecraft yeah, 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 Heroes, yeah. I don't know. And it was yeah. like the Diablo esque one, wasn't it? I, yeah. I did that in one sitting. Right. <laughs> And I was like, okay, I can't even remember the name of it, which is really bad, I know, but but I, I thought it was it was it washed over me fine, but it was it was good. Uh, I'm gonna check this out as well. So that was it was a nice way to start it off, like you know. Yeah, I, I think it's um again, Minecraft isn't my jam, uh, unfortunately, but I appreciate those that are into it. I I, I totally understand why. Um, yeah, but I, I, I think it, it uh, Legends looks it's Legends, right? Minecraft Legends. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it looks it looks really nice. Um, there's a, a nice genre twist on it. The fact that they still keep the um, the openness of what you can build and how you can build and the contraptions that you can do to defend, mm. you know, your location and things. I I, I think that's really cool. And um, what a really there's what a great way to get newcomers into a new genre that they may not have played before which then sparks all this other interest in other games further afield and i think that is something that is missing from games these days are those tamer experiences of genres that are quite hardcore um percent yeah i always thought uh, that's what i i always say i i wonder how many sort of XCOM warlords were born from mario and rabbits you know yeah because yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, ta- you know, tactical minds and that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the developer director was quite nice. It did one thing that I really liked. It seemed to temper expectations rather than build them too high. And you yeah. know how most um, how most sort of events end with it. And here's our mind blowing one more thing. They were kind of like, and just to let everybody know, just as an FYI, we know everyone wants Starfield. It's going to get its own show later. Okay, bye now. That's how it ended. It ended with yeah. them tempering an expectation rather than going. And here is it unfinished. We really had to rush this one out to make you happy, guys. Starfield teaser trailer. More info soon. They were like, "We know that everyone wants it. We're working on it. It's coming out soon. We just don't know when." And, Bye. and do, you, do you know what? I, I, I did have this. I did have this thought, um, and then I, I came to my own conclusion of why this was. That developer direct landed exactly the same day that GoldenEye was released uh, on Xbox as yeah. well and on oh. Switch. Yeah. And I, I, a part of me was surprised that that didn't end up in there. Now, obviously, that was announced before, but what I still what a nice bigger moment to say, oh, if you don't check the news, you can play Goldeneye now. But then yeah. uh, I, I also thought that whilst that is cool, it may have detracted from Hi-Fi Rush, maybe. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, ex- ex- exactly that. Which... It's Hi-Fi Rush, not Hi-Fi it, Life. It's Hi-Fi definitely Rush. Hi-Fi Rush, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi-Fi Rush, yeah. So... Yeah, I thought that was interesting. A nice little treat, but and, and like you say, sorry, there's one thing that I didn't really touch on that you said that I think is a great, great, great thing to mention is how many more of these do we think that Xbox might have? Well, obviously, like I always thought that Xbox were, and I kind of kind of joked about this to my friends and not too a mean spirited way. I always thought like Xbox really try and be cool and that they're really generous with what they give. You know, Phil comes out in a leather jacket, Phil Spencer, of course. Uh, and yeah. comes out with a leather jacket and goes, "Hey guys, here's everything I've got. Here's Keanu Reeves, guys, really." And like Nintendo would like, they don't even show up. They're just like, "Here's a pre-recorded video in Splatoon, you little freaks." <laughs> you know, have for some of that. But, but the fact that the fact that Xbox, you know, are like, "Oh, we've got surprises too," makes me just go, "All right, come on." 
you know yeah. it's, it's 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 great so i really i really really enjoyed that uh because you know although i don't really personally give that much uh, interest in, and love into the, like thoughts in minecraft and i don't play the elder scrolls online i watch a whole thing about stuff i don't really care too much yeah. about and gone oh that was really nice you know so it was nice it was yeah. nice because it was insightful as well it's like oh okay yeah absolutely yeah. so yeah i can't wait to see the next one if the next like you know imagine this again in, I, like, i'm already excited about the thought of this again in six months time with maybe that ever wild fable you know all the uh you know the obsidian thing that they're doing whatever it's yeah, called, yeah. avowed know. avowed yeah that's my stuff yeah right. out of right. worlds too exactly exa imagine that with that oh my gosh so brilliant okay there we go so that was the xbox developer direct as promised uh let us know what you thought of it uh if you're interested in any of the games on the way you can do so by tweeting us at wired unplugged on twitter or you can email us unplugged at wired productions dot com uh there's no other way to contact us so like don't like i don't know leave us a spotify review or whatever asking us a question you could leave us a spotify review but just don't you know have a question in there um what yeah. else was happening in the news this week well as lots of stuff and as promised and as per usual we're coming to the end of our time <laughs> but um i think one that links in nicely to what we we're just talking about is um there was a bit of uh an update on e3 um this week um, yes. where um, some sources are reporting um, that Nintendo PlayStation Xbox will not be attending E3 this year. The first return to physically free. Now, one thing we do know, and let's, let's be very, let's just be clear and separate this out. When it says that they're not going to be attending E3, that means that they will not have presence on the show floor. So show. that doesn't mean that there won't be a state of play. It doesn't mean that there won't be a Nintendo E3 Direct and one thing that we do know, because it was confirmed, is that Xbox will be having an E3 presentation at the theater over the road from the convention center, and um, that they will be doing their own gaming showcase within that space as they've done prior. Yeah. So yeah. technically, they will be activating something at E3, yeah. uh, but E3 they won't be on the season. E3 show floor. They yeah. will be E3 adjacent, yes. you know, because... Much, yeah. Jeff's Summer of Game Fest Just thing will be that. happening as well. Absolutely. June the 8th, I think it is, or June the 10th. I yeah. can't remember. It's one day, it's before or after my birthday. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's, it's around that exactly. EA were the first to really do this where they were like, we're there, we're here, we're right there, you can play our games, but uh, not there. We're not paying those prices. We'll yeah. do it by ourselves. Devolver used to have a, uh, I think they used to have a car park outside of the convention center like over the road like a block away yeah yeah yeah, yeah and yeah. just take over the whole thing and it'll be like oh they have a little festival this, this some hot dog it. trucks so everyone seems to be doing that so, so you're dead right um for those that are really care i suppose this is only for people who are really into the granular details or whatever e3 of course under new ownership by very popular consumer showrunners read pop who are responsible for the packs series of events as well as egx here in the uk so uh yeah they've taken the e3 mantle and they uh seem to by all accounts be kind of packsifying e3 this year um, well, games comifying i guess games comifying yeah i wonder yeah. if it really will have a business to business area as well but yeah. Uh, yeah the e3 season seems to still be in full effect and i was excited to hear that xbox are going to have a show as well as you know jeff doing his bit so shout out yeah. to you. Uh, but, and, and then, you know, nin, nin, Nintendo always show up with an E3 Direct. That's not confirmed or denied or anything. But it's but, always a summer showcase, isn't it? Yeah. And it, it, I, you know, I, I think I've seen a lot of people be quite put out and disappointed about this. And I don't understand why. Because, you know, it can be a bit of a shame to be like, yeah, I'm going to my first E3 and unfortunately Nintendo won't be there or PlayStation won't be there. That's fine if you're going, first E3 but and that's not the reason why you're going to E3, right? You're probably on business or you are doing a consumer thing, which is fine. But yeah. think about the purpose of E3, what it is meant for from a business perspective, um, it, what it used to be for, should I say. And now... It, it has become more of a a media event over being more primarily useful for business because if you look at um look at the um the e three conference that Nintendo did when Reggie first came out came out on stage and said, "I'm about kicking ass, taking names, and we're about making games and then they showed Star Fox and all that jazz, and he was like, "Oh, here's the d s and here's a Metroid game on it." 
here is uh, a new Zelda game, Twilight Princess, and everyone goes mad. The audience reaction is amazing. Every time I watch it, I get goosebumps. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Um, but peppered throughout that is the core reason of why they are there is because they do business updates. They talk about market share, yeah. pricing, yeah. Uh, stock stuff. allocation, blah, 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 because they would have shareholders and potential shareholders come along because it was about buying shares, buying faith in the future of the company and so on. Yeah, um, and it's not about that anymore. It's not about that yeah, anymore. Exactly. Like if you look at retail, look, uh, sorry, another business reason. So retail, retailers would send buyers to E3, right? So for example, let's take Game. Game would send their team of, of buyers to go check out, meet with their partners at all of the different companies, check out the games, and then make some decisions on, we are going to support this with, you know, marketing thing X, Y and Z. Uh, we are looking to take X amount of units if you give us an exclusive pre-order deal. That doesn't happen in, anymore because game and many retailers don't deal directly with all of the game publishers anymore. They take a selection of, and then the rest is through a third party like you and I. Yeah. Um, not you and I, but yeah. a company called you and I, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, who, who handle orders for stock outside of the, the main big five, let's say. Mm -hmm. So the business of video games has changed. Retail in video games has changed media since December. Well, sorry, since late last year through to now, look at what has happened in the media space that is changing as well. It's E3 is reason. not what it meant to, no, isn't no. what it was originally meant no. for, is essentially what I'm saying. It's still a magical moment, don't get me wrong, absolutely. but, but the, uh, so yeah. much has changed. Absolutely, and a lot of it will come down to the fact that, yeah, like, why dance to the tune of everyone else where you can just go a week early in your own venue, do your own thing, you decide, you know? Yeah. So very, very interesting. Uh, but still, so it's going to be an absolutely jam-packed summer full of games uh, and announcements of the ilk. Yeah. Um, all right. What do you want to talk about? All right. That's what I was going to say. Uh, all right. Then. So, so, uh, all right. I, I, I've got. We'll do. We'll do the the bottom bit of news, but I guess I'll segue into it right by talking about another bit of news. Watch this. Dead Space uh, had a re. Well, in the words of John Carpenter, horror legend, who tweeted about it, he said that the yes. Dead Space refurbishment. <laughs> Dead Space refurbished. It's great. I love it. So love the it. Dead Space refurb. Uh, uh, the physical launch sales uh, were announced uh, this week and they're half uh, of Callisto Protocol. Now, having played both games, um, I've got to tell you that uh, it kind of... I'm going to be completely honest with you. I thought Callisto Protocol was okay. But Dead Space, uh, and I wanted to love it because I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd rather listen to some new material than, than a cover song or whatever. Okay. So, so when I was like... Now, the Demon Souls remake, I got a brand new TV this week, and the first thing I wanted to put on my my telly was the Demon Souls remake by, by yes. Bluepoint. Uh, that and Ratchet and & Clank are still, like, the best fidelity like graphics in, 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 at, at the moment. Anyway, Dead Space. They have a, a, a little refurb. I've been playing it, smashing through it, nearly done with it. Um, the reason I, I could have done it, the reason I didn't do it is because I've been distracted. Uh, I've been distracted by uh, lots of new material within the game it seems to have kept the core intact quite a lot whilst adding a lot of stuff yeah. isaac the main character now talks and he has his helmet off and the two like you know hired goons at the beginning of the game now have like full backstories quests what? side quests there's characters that are only alluded to in the uh, first game that now have you, you can meet them it's changed some aspects of it there's different rooms there's loads and i always found that really interesting and it makes me think hmm I wonder if the other remake horror games this year will have anything like that. Well, this takes us on to our last bit of news, doesn't it? This this one no, this one going on? this one excites me. So, um, as we know, another prominent remake is coming off the back of a, a really impressive stint of a rebirth for the franchise. So, Resident Evil Four is getting a remake. Um, as we know, it's not too far away, which is very exciting. Yeah. I've massive bunch of new details have been announced for the game this week that seems like it's taking a dead space approach of keeping the core journey of the game intact and i, I think they referenced it the 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 um the creative director said what it's about with this is turning up what was there to 11 so you know maximizing 
you know, yeah. the, the vibe and so on. Um, but similar to Dead Space, they've announced so many new things, you know, like side quests are going to be in the game. Um, it's going to be new weapons. They've shown off some new enemies as well. So there are these really cool, like, werewolf-esque, fluffy demon dogs. There's this guy with, like, a crow mask with a massive hammer who looks more intimidating and scary than Chainsaw Guy. Um, there's new Ashley mechanics. So, you know, you don't have to just dump her in the corner of a room or in, in the bin and say, wait there while I just deal with these people. Um, so, you know, uh, they've, they've added new ways to bring Ashley into the mix to make, like, two, um, two player-esque puzzles i guess so you know you can send ashley through uh a, a gap that only ashley can get through because leo is leo like a, like a leo gun. sorry leo leon leo. Leo. Uh, <laughs> leo kennedy um <laughs> leon is he's just got too buff he's got too buff um and then you know she can she can make a way through and then do her own thing and then like lower Kratos a ladder and atreus or, a, a, exactly. or ellie and joel you know like that, that yeah. sort of single player playstation affair they've got yeah. the uh the, the kind of useful uh, NPC companion rather than uh, the president's daughter, Ashley, who was famously a drip and really Tell annoying. Leon. Leon! And like e e Leon. everybody found it annoying. Uh, I, 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 by the end of it, I kind of got Stockholm Syndrome, reverse Stockholm Syndrome. We were saving yeah. it from a cactus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I was still like, oh, I learned to love her. Um, but, and now it turns <laughs> out she's, she could be quite useful. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. There, there, there's more. There's more, Jake. Yeah, um, they, they, they've added some... The, the thing that I find uh, the most interesting is that they've kind of gone back to... Um, do you remember the Resident Evil 1 remake on GameCube? I see. Um, yeah. And, the retro and they introduced, it introduced the Crimson Heads. So if you didn't burn... The yes. zombies' bodies, if you didn't take their head off, they had a chance of rising as crimson heads, which were fast and even more dangerous and deadly. Yeah. They've got a version, they've got a version of that in the game. So if you down an enemy, um, if you see them convulse or wiggle slightly, it means that they have an opportunity to be reborn as a more deadly Ganado. Um, so, nice. you know, you have to take them out, uh, with, with a stealthy knife kill or something mm -hmm. just to end them completely. So that, that's, that's quite a cool ad addition to this. And my favorite thing, my favorite thing, cause yeah. I was a big fan of Resident Evil three and this was a big thing, um, is you could mix your gun powders to make more ammo and different types of ammo yeah. that is back in mm -hmm. the Resident Evil four remake, which is very oh. exciting because, They've removed one thing, which is either happy or sad, depending on how much you love running away from boulders uh, by tapping the A button, mm, um, yes. is that they've done their best to try and remove as many quick time events as they can. Yeah, yeah. Take from that what you want. I don't, but I didn't iconic. appreciate those boulder running scenes. No, me, me, me neither, really. So I recently played Resident Evil 4 on the Oculus Quest, nice. which is unbelievable you, it's one of them where you can't even watch it on youtube but you have to be in it to understand yeah. it it is insane how good that is it's a full, it's a full game in vr and you can literally dodge duck dive dash and dodge grab oh, your oh, knife oh you can literally yeah, throw yeah, your yeah. knife from hand to hand like that Get rat in fantastic mr fox john wick yeah oh, oh, honestly honestly that's the only thing about it it made me, it made me too full of adrenaline that i was just yeah. going i turned my gun sideways as well hell yeah i yeah, so this is really new information. So new that e even though it was today, it was announced. Uh, people, uh, you know, if you're checking us out on Friday, you might not have even seen this. This comes from a, an exclusive of Game Informer where they got a thirteen feature. pages. Yeah, come on, juicy that. Yes. Is. So th the mad thing is, it seems like I feel like I. Well, I did only play Dead Space this week. I, it, it's, it's a month and a half away. The Resident Evil Four remake, and I think yeah. it's a. The, isn't it the next month? The Silent Hill Two remakes out. Ah. So yeah. uh, what Halloween has got. Big boots to fill. <laughs> I, you know? I, I, I'm very. I'm, I, I can't wait for this for this game. However, I, I have one gripe. Yeah. I have one gripe, and people are going to be like, "Oh, you're so stupid." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stop, stop having an opinion. Um, but my my gripe with it is that everything I see of it, I can see the mechanical shadows of Resident Evil Village. And I have to, I have to think that this game was made possible because you, you, they added third-person mode to Resident Evil Village and stuff. And there's something in the aesthetic of what I've seen of Four and some of the enemy designs that I'm like, I, I feel like it is 
quite not far away enough from the aesthetic and visual and I, splendor of a of, of village. And I, I like the village, but I feel I'm like, eh, does it still feel like Resident Evil 4 vibe? I know what you're on about. So for those I, of people yeah, who I, I'm being on, very nitpicky, no, by I know the way. What you're yeah. on about, so yeah. I guess for those that are maybe uninitiated, like what Aaron's referring to is the fact that Resident Evil Village is like the eighth Resident Evil game, which takes place like you can probably imagine, in a village, which yeah. was probably the differentiating factor between Resident Evil 4 and literally all the other ones. The fact that this is made in the same engine as 8 mm. means that, that suddenly they're very similar. They're, they yeah. look the same, and they have a lot of similar feels suddenly. You know, so I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. If, if, if this was made before 8... When eight came out, maybe it could get yeah. away with it. But when it works backwards, I know exactly what you mean. I really, really do. So yeah, yeah interesting. I, Excited for it all the same, but there's just this shadow yeah. there that I'm like, ooh. Well, I, I don't know. know. Well, you know, I'll, I'll end it on this. You know, Dead Space. I knew I was going to like it on paper, but I wasn't actually anticipate. You know, and you know, going to go and play a game again that you've already played. You know, you're like, yeah. that's good. It feels safe. So I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good. When I played it, I actually forgot how good De Dead Space was. And I was really happy with the stuff that I saw that was new. And yeah. it kind of blurred the line in my head where I'm like, is this a fond memory or is this a new one? I couldn't tell. You know, I was yeah. like a replicant. Um, I couldn't tell which memories have been implanted and which ones are real. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this. And I'm really Me looking too. forward to, again, having that nice little line crossed a little bit of not, no, not quite remembering what was a good old memory and what was actually something very cleverly designed and it's actually something brand new. How well will this new monster that you explained in the bull mask work next to our Mr. Happy Chainsaw? Like we're we're gonna we're gonna find out together, yeah. and I, and I'm really looking forward to it. So there we go, another jam packed episode of the Wired Unplugged podcast. Next week is episode fifty, so please join us for that. Who knows what shenanigans will go on? But thank you everybody for listening. Uh, if you've been playing anything this week, uh, or you watched Xbox Direct, uh, developer conference, whatever the hell they called it, let us know. Uh, you can tweet us at Wired Unplugged. No questions for you this week. You ask us something. How about that? And we'll come back to you. Uh, all right, see you soon, Aaron. Thank you very much. Stay warm, everybody. Goodbye. Wired. Unplugged.